one of the great artists in the world from Israel. Oh, in Israel, and just played and just got well some of the best reviews I have ever read in my life in the L.A. Times. I love this one. She played at the UCLA's um, Royce Hall last Saturday night. She pounces on the piano like a bird of prey, uh -huh. and she is happiest when she all but picks it up in her teeth and shakes it. <laughs> This requires strength and endurance to a staggering degree. She has boundless power and speed, resentless, uh, rent, uh, no, not resentless, he re relentless. Relentless. He also called her the, a piano Amazon woman. Oh. She is one of the great pianists of all time. At, at Tigress, uh, they called her, at the keyboard. She's about to show you how good she is, performing a, an etude by Chopin. Would you welcome Ilana Vered? Ilana! Is it? Yeah. In, in Israel, you don't speak Yiddish. No. Because you translated her name, Vered, as meaning Vered. truth. But that means, sure, well, name means... from veracity, lot. from verite. Vered. Uh. Very <laughs> red. It, up. it means a wild rose. A wild rose. <laughs> huh? wild rose. Look. <laughs> I didn't make this up. Oh, no. How'd you like that review, Yolanda? Oh, I love reviews like this. Yeah. I love them to hate me or to love me. Yeah, it's, it's really a, a passionate review. I know. I mean, Real reaction. About she went through mushy this. right no, like she's no. really nice and she's just playing like a kitten of the keyboard yeah. no <laughs> you don't play that but i love that it seems like she's going to grab the piano by your teeth and shake it huh well this time i wouldn't do it too but uh, it's extraordinary my word you're a wonderful artist thank Ooh. you now it's off again it's back to israel to appear with Zubin Mehta. but that's a great honor isn't it because it, it's uh, aren't it's you one of the special um um, marathon for the memory of Arthur Rubinstein. Mm. So they chose some of the world's greatest pianists to play each night a different concerto which you play. So. Which concerto are you going to do? Uh, Rachmaninoff Paganini, which is one of my uh, beloved. Yeah. yeah. Is Special. it da 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 da? Yeah, I played all the time. I'm going to put it on my tombstone. Mm. She played right And you're going to do it at the Thomas Mann Auditorium? Exactly. Oh, I love that auditorium yeah. in Tel Aviv. Have you been there? Yes, yeah, sure. I conducted Zubin's Symphony Orchestra there. Yeah. Nobody followed. But ooh, it's like <laughs> we were there together, remember? No. Yeah. We were yeah, you were playing tennis with uh, uh and Ram Rabin, the president. Yeah. Yeah. And I was there with the uh, with the tour. <gasps> That's with right. Mary University. You tour. know what I thought of I thought of Tel Aviv University. Puerto Rico, yeah. That's where I met Jan Murray at the Wailing Wall. Oh my And when we left he said to me, Jack, God willing, next year in Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> 
So usually it's next year in Jerusalem. <laughs> I would think that's one of the great symphonies of the world because those are the great artists of Europe and... Uh, and well, the thing was that in Europe they were not really capable of playing in most of the orchestras because they were living in the ghettos and all that. And after the war, many of them escaped, even before the war, during the war. Toscanini, the great maestro, actually formed the orchestra. Do you know that? I didn't know he that. There was just, almost just sands. There was nothing. And there was already a symphony orchestra, which Toscanini formed. But you talk about remarkable elderly people, people in their, you know, 90s, like uh, George Burns and... Jack's butter, who he does all those crazy jokes about, but she's an extraordinary woman. Uh, there's a 90-something-year-old man who conducts that symphony when Zubin's not there. Right. Uh, he was about 94, 95. Well, conductors and pianists live very long. You know why? It's a good thing to do, Mer. You know why? <laughs> the, oh, the profession that lives the longest, if you, you always read about a conductor, he yeah. died at 101, yeah. he died at... Because of the movement of the arms, exactly. it strength, strengthens the, vacu the vascular, I can't say nothing today, the vascular uh, muscle. Yeah, they, yeah, they actually the in the air. said to do this exercise. There was a study out of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Every morning conduct, even if you can't, uh, whatever. And, and then you quit for what, about ten years? Yes. And, about and concentrated eight. on the family. Was it eight years? Yeah. And well, I was always a uh, wunderkind, a prodigy. Wunderkind. I'm asking him for the Jewish word. Yeah. <laughs> One golden child. <laughs> and I think I just had enough of being paraded around as a freaky kind of a protege. Yeah, and I wanted to know what life Child was outside. Prodigy. Right. Yeah. I wanted to see what it's like not to be practicing all day long and to give concerts all the time. So I became a total woman. I had a child. I learned to make chicken 26 ways. Jeez. I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> He's sitting here. That's how you make a child like you make a chicken. <laughs> You make a child, you take two onions, cut it in half. <laughs> it's funny too, because uh, there was a child prodigy when I was growing up, and I always felt for that child. Her name was Ruth Schlenczynski. The, yeah, she yeah. was beaten by her father. That was her, her yeah, thing. Yeah. My father didn't beat me up. And it was so tough because that child looked like she was forced to practice 12 mm. hours a day. Mm. And if it's not fun in life, don't do it. No. That's what Rubinstein had, which was so fantastic. Did you ever see his movie, Joie de Vivre? Mm. He absolutely enjoyed every aspect. The traveling, the women, the yeah. food, the yeah. playing. Yeah. 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 It's an art. It is. It is. It's a lonely actor, isn't it? It's a lonely art. Huh? Rubinstein, the actor? John? That's his son. Yes, yeah, yeah. John, yeah. And, and now, now the conducting story, Zubin told me that. When Leonard Bernstein was conducting, you know how Bernstein loved to look at the camera? Yeah. And he realized that where his pages were, he hadn't turned, is not where the orchestra was. You know, so he looked at the band and he went, don't follow me. <laughs> hey, Leonard, play again for us, will you? Right. What were you going to do? Moskovsky, 18, number six. It's a horribly special thing. Oh, I'll try. Oh, I love Vladimir. it. Vladimir. Yes. Ilana Beric. great uh, artist is about to play for you. She's uh, performed throughout the world with the leading 
symphony orchestras. This is her latest album, and it contains the uh, Rachmaninoff Piano Concerto Number no. Two and the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto Number no. One. Uh, she recently was selected as one of the world's eight greatest pianists to um, appear at a concert in uh, her native Israel. Right now, she's going to favor us with an arabesque number no. one, I think, written by Claude Debussy. Here is Ilana Vered. hashing over their repertoires here. But it makes me sad when you play, uh, Elana, that, that beautiful thing like the Debussy the Arabesque, and you realize that, you know, you played in your youth, and now you've forgotten it. And you've just played it. You didn't oh, forget it at no, all. Oh, I played four <laughs> bars in the opening, and you go on with it. I'm in trouble. What an honor. You're the only woman that was selected the world's greatest pianists, eight of them. It's a memorial to Rubinstein, oh. Arthur Rubinstein, and they'll be playing each one a different concerto that he played. And you were doing it at that beautiful, in Tel Aviv, at the Man? The Man Editorium, you remember mm, it. I got to conduct 
the Israeli symphony there. The greatest thrill of my... Zubin Mehta let me do it. Really? Yeah. Well, I should do the game. Yeah. And you know how they all tap on their instruments at the end when you play? Yeah. They threw them at me. Get out. (laughs) (laughs) This young lady has moved... Listen to this. For a moving company, she is a dream come true. She's had to move 27 times. About. From just about. practicing. They don't like my practicing anywhere. What city was that in? <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. In Paris, they threw water at me. No. They do that. Maybe you should have played some Satie or some more <laughs> Debussy <laughs> or Ravel. Maybe they didn't like my Israeli accent in Debussy. No, you cannot play right. Beethoven in <laughs> Paris, right? Right now, I moved to the village. I thought in the loft I could practice. Oh, yeah. Before I was a Park Avenue lady. My husband's a doctor in Mount Sinai, and I could do it. So they didn't like that. Mm. So I moved to the village to be an artist in the loft. They started rattling on the pipes. Oh. They wanted to throw me in my stand way out. Oh. It's just, uh, Is this yours? I'm looking for a place. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. I can practice here, right? To hear you all day. Oh. Um, Ilana Vered is from uh, Israel. Studied in Israel? As a child, yeah. yeah. We have all the great artists of Europe there. Yes. Ooh. It's really a melting pot. Are you going to play something by an Israeli? Yes. What? I thought it's time. It is time. Ben, <laughs> ben Chaim. Ben Chaim. Chaim. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you had it today with <laughs> Jaro. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's Hawaiian, which I don't understand. The Takata by Ben Chaim. Ilana Vered. Yeah.